we have a digital signal processor. Like I said, we have a digital signal processor, or a DSP. This is from Access, which is made by Metra. A lot of companies are, are doing things with their, their radios where they're the touchscreen infotainment things. And um, the issue is once you try to add an amplifier to that system, it sounds weird. It has just, you know, it'll, you'll either have way too much bass or way too many highs or way too many mids or not enough of this or that and you're not left with a whole lot of adjustment. So when we installed the Soundstream amplifiers in Project Dirty Willy, we used the factory head unit, and then when we put those amps in, we noticed that it was really, really high. Like everything was, you know, just ear-piercingly high, and we could turn the treble all the way down. I'll show you that here in a little bit of what we actually had to do on the radio to get it to be tolerable, if that's the correct word there. Um, and that's where this comes in. This takes your signal and you get a 31 band EQ for the front, the rear, and an optional subwoofer if you would like to add one. You can wire this directly into the factory wiring of the vehicle. Um, it is set up with RCAs on the ends that you can cut off and like I said, you can wire it in or you could put this in uh, with an existing system and have a DSP uh, even with an aftermarket radio or something like that, and you would have, you know, those 31 band equalizers. They don't offer a plug and play harness for our application, so I'm gonna wire this in direct. So we'll get the camera moved over to the bench and uh, get this out of the box and show you what it comes with and what it looks like. So when you get your DSP, you'll take it out of the box and it'll look like you just have your digital signal processor itself. They uh, put the instructions underneath it, and then they kind of hide all the wiring underneath here. And uh, to some people, this may seem like you know a fairly intimidating install, but it's it's really really not. It's basically just cutting and splicing wires. Um, once you find out what your factory speaker wire colors are, this would be your input harness, the one that has all of your little male connections, the RCA connections. And then your output also has RCA, but it has the female connections. And these are to go out to your amplifiers. With our input harness, what we'll have to do is come in here and cut off these RCAs because we're wiring directly into our factory wiring. So you'll have, you know, your rear speakers and then if I can get them all pulled out here. And then your front speakers. So we'll cut these off and then you have you know your various grounds and power and stuff like that and then once you have this wired up it plugs into your dsp and then you have your output harness that goes out to your amplifiers which will give you outputs for a subwoofer and then four more outputs which would be front and rear left and right if you were running a four channel amplifier or two separate amplifiers like we are. So we'd be running, you know, left and right, left and right. And then maybe later on a subwoofer. Uh, you also get a remote turn on wire to turn your amplifiers on. So as you can see, we have the dash apart and uh, I wanted to zoom in here on the factory head unit and show you the uh, EQ issues that I'm talking about. So it's, it's Jeep and Chrysler and uh, actually a, a lot of new car manufacturers when they're going to these new, um, they call them infotainment centers, they do a certain EQ curve inside of the head unit itself in order to make the factory speakers that come with the vehicle sound as good as possible while using the least expensive speakers that they possibly can, uh, if that makes any sense. So basically, if you were to set your EQ on your radio flat, you know, with everything, your bass, high, treble, all of that stuff, however yours is set up, if you were to set it all at zero, it would sound flat inside the vehicle, like you wouldn't have any spikes or anything like that. But that flat setting actually isn't flat. That signal 
makes the factory speakers flat. It doesn't make the audio signal flat. So if I turn on the Jeep here, and then I go into audio, you can see that I have it set one click to the front to take a little bit away from the sound bar. And then if I go into the equalizer, since I added aftermarket speakers and aftermarket amplifiers, you can really, really tell how they have their internal equalizer on this set up. Not exactly true, if that makes sense. Again, this is kind of hard to explain, but you can see here that I have my bass down negative four, my mids down negative four, but then you get over here to the treble and that is negative eight. That can only go down one more. So this treble being negative eight would be almost close to zero on a regular head unit. So that's where the DSP comes in to correct all of this. So we'll be able to have everything set at zero and we'll be able to flatten everything out with the new Access DSP. I've got the DSP up here. I've already kind of went through and did a little bit of a tune. So um, let me set the camera down here. I'm doing this with two phones because I wanted to tune the head unit with Bluetooth because when uh, you play like Spotify and stuff off of your phone with Bluetooth, it sounds completely different than the radio and we hardly ever listen to the radio. We normally listen to like Spotify or any kind of Bluetooth stuff. So I'm gonna tune it according to that. So I needed a phone to run Bluetooth to the head unit, but I also needed another phone, which this is my old phone, to Bluetooth to the DSP. You have to get the app for the DSP. You just go to the Google Play Store and search for Access uh, DSP and you'll see it there. But I got the app downloaded here and then you get your main screen that comes up. You wanna scan and then it'll pop up your DSP, it'll connect to it. And then once you're connected, if you're using the interface that's a plug and play system for a lot of other vehicles, which I'm not, you go through here and you set your vehicle and uh, all the different things. So you can have like the volume of your GPS at a different you know level and everything. You can set the chime volume because that's that's a big thing when you install an amplifier and you know say when you hit a button your radio beeps well if you have to have your amps set really high well that beep is going to be really really loud well you can go through and you can change all that if you're running the interface that is set up for you know specific vehicles but i'm not running that the only reason why i ran this is so i could go in here and adjust the eq and as you can see that is a crazy setting that's the rear and that's the front that's what i had to do to get the radio in this thing flat um, of course you can go in and adjust your subwoofer too if you have one you can set up your crossover i'm set at 85 hertz uh, they had a preset at 100 but you can use the little slider or you can tap on it and then you can put in whatever you want and hit send and it'll do all your changes and stuff. And if you do all your changes and stuff in your equalizer, you go back over to uh, like configuration and hit the lockdown button. And what that does is it, it saves what settings you're at. And then you could save configuration and it'll let you add a name to it. And then you can have multiple different configurations if you want. But the app's really easy to use. You just go through and you set your EQ. Um, this would be easier on a tablet because you would have more room to, you know, actually get in there with your finger and move all of this stuff. But doing that change to the rear and that change to the front, you can see that I had to cut the high end completely out and the low end completely out and then kind of bevel the mids. And uh, it's a lot different in the rear and that's just because of the enclosure, because I have the same speakers and amp front and rear. Um, so doing all of that allowed me to be able to have
have my equalizer set flat instead of it being, you know, all crazy like it was before. So I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if this was really all that informative. Uh, this I wasn't going to do a video on this. I just I started doing it and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to get out the camera and mess around with it and and uh, do some recording. So hopefully I got enough that I can make somewhat of an informative video out of this and somebody can get something out of it and kind of learn a little bit about the Access DSP. If uh, you came across this and you're not one of my subscribers or you're new to the channel, make sure to go into my channel and check out a couple videos. I've got all kinds of different stuff in there. If you uh, find a video that you like, hit the like button. If you have something to say, leave it down in the comments. And if you find a couple videos that you like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.